Hi, and welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the Homeless and the Poor, Pastor and Founder Vince Rosado. My name is Minister Warren Rudd. I'm a licensed minister by Bishop Jimmy A. Ellis III out of Victory Christian Center of Philadelphia, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tonight's lesson is going to be on the gifts of the body. You know, we're coming toward Christmas, and most folk don't understand the free gifts that God gives us. He gives us salvation, He gives us the Holy Ghost, and He gives us something called the distribution of endowment, which is your gifts and talents. So tonight, sit back get a paper and pencil and enjoy this word as I always say there you go right there mm -hmm. God bless Now let's go to Isaiah 43. God wants you to be still and keep your mind open. Amen? Amen. And then after we read this, then we're going to pray them, okay? Psalms 43, starting at verse 18 and 19. So, I mean Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19. Remember you not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you know, shall you not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers of the desert. Uh, what that verse is talking about, and I want to say to you right now, when he says the former things, don't let the devil remind you of your past. Forget about your past. You're ready to show you some great gifts in the Word of God. But until you put away the former things, your past, you won't be able to move over. So the thing I want to say to you is just what I wrote up here. Our past doesn't have to determine our future when God has given you a free gift. Amen. Our past don't have to determine our future. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for the word that's about ready to come forth. I thank you for the people that are here. I thank you for the holidays that are coming forth. We cast down depression. We cast down oppression. We cast down depression. We cast down all these negative things that may come our way. And we ask you to enlighten us, fill us with joy. Because it ain't about a present in a box. It ain't about material things. It ain't about none of those kind of things, but what you have freely given unto us. So I ask that the preacher decrease and that you may increase. Let me walk on the word of your word that I may be able to establish, build, and guide the men and women of God. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Let God say amen. 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 All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And what we're going to be talking about is the gifts of the body. I know you see little notes up there, but there's so much that I want to give to you, and we've got to move pretty quickly. I'm going to try not to be uh, elaborate. I just want to be as detailed as possible. Amen? Amen. amen. So we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Starting at verse 1. Now for those of you who have King James Bibles, it's very important. Remember, the Bibles that we use are only called translations. They are not the exact word. Every Bible that we pick up here, whether it's NIV, King James, Amplified, or whatever, they're just translations. So that means there have been things added into it to enlighten us in our language, okay? All right, so remember, they're just translations, okay? But let's look at the first verse. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, now if you have a King James, if you look at that word gifts, it might have a, a funny print to it. Anybody got that in your Bible? Yeah. Yeah. Right, that's called italicized. That's an italicized printing. That means when the King James decided to interpret the original text, they added this word to it. So every time you see a word in the King James Bible that's italicized, that means you can read that word with it or without. Got me? Because the scribes added it in for our English language for a better understanding. Let's keep reading. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brother, I would not have you be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto the dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord 
but by who? Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but the same God which worketh all in all. Now, if you look at verses 4 to 6, you will see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in that. You know? Because what verse 4 says, the same Spirit, the Holy Ghost. In verse 5, the same Lord, you go the Son. And in verse 6, it says the same God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen? Verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man that profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Here's our gifts. You ready? By the word of wisdom. One. To another, the word of knowledge. By the same Spirit. Two. To another, faith. By the same Spirit. Three. To another, the gifts of healing. By the same Spirit. Four. <laughs> to another, the working of mirrors. Five. To another, prophecy. Six. To another, discerning of spirits. Seven. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. That means many kinds of tongues. The word diverse is many. To another, interpretation of tongues. But all these work that one in the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So God gives you these gifts according to his will. These are called temporal gifts too. One day you'll be walking in a word of wisdom. Next day you won't have that word of wisdom. Amen? That's for that moment, for that individual. One day you'll be able to interpret the tongue, next day you won't. Because it's a, it's a temporal gift, a <coughs> manifestation. But I'm getting ready to show you some permanent ones in a minute. Amen? Amen? Verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members, amen, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Jump down to verse 28. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healings, helps, governments, and diversities of tongues. Amen? Amen. Amen? Once a gift is given, it is completely yours. Are you hearing? Once a gift is given to you, it's completely yours. As an individual, you can't claim a gift of the Spirit. Amen. You can't claim a gift of the Spirit. Because they are not, because they are not always yours. Let's look at verse eleven. What does verse eleven say? But all these work of that one in the self same spirit, dividing to every man severely as he wills. Amen. Amen. God uses these nine gifts to reveal Himself through the manifestation in verse seven. Let's look at verse seven. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to what? Profit with all. And that is called the anointing. So when God gives you these gifts, he's anointing you. Amen? Amen? And once you have the spirit, and you all do, everybody here got a spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Whether it's for Christ or not, but the devil has a spirit too. Amen. Amen. Because we all have it. Once you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you qualify to be used of God. Is anybody ready to be used of God? I hope so. Let's go to Acts 28. I mean, make that Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Okay. Acts 2, verse 38. I'm looking at my uh, pad here. I need to blow it up. I'm trying to read it. Acts chapter 2. And let's look at verse 38. Acts 2 and 38 says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the what? The Holy Ghost. But repent and be baptized, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, what is the gift of the Holy Ghost called? When you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and be baptized, even though I don't have in this order, it's called a gratuity. Now, you know, I got it written up there. When you go to a restaurant and they have on that slip, leave a gratuity, what are they talking about? Yeah. A tip. So, whenever you receive salvation, you get a gratuity from God. You get a tip from God. Amen? And that gratuity is what's going to bless you. It really is going to bless you. Now, in other words, if you receive Christ, he'll tip you. This means you don't have to wait to receive the Holy Ghost. You don't even have to speak in tongues to receive the Holy Ghost. So nobody, so if people are walking up to you talking about, you know, the evidence of being baptized in the Holy Ghost is because you speak in tongues, don't receive that. Speaking in tongues is not a prerequisite for salvation. And so a lot of denominations don't do it. 
It is not a prerequisite whether you go to heaven or hell or not. Amen. It just says, I want to get on a tongues thing because we're in a Presbyterian house. I mean, I can teach it completely. Me, I do it. I'm never going to deny it. But when I'm in a house that says no, we don't. Amen. I respect the house I'm in. All right? And I would say you do the same thing and then God honors you. You know, but in my home, I do. Amen. I don't deny nothing that God gives me. All right. Okay, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. So as we know, when you receive the Lord, you know you get a gratuity. And that gratuity is a tip because you're accepting God's free gift. We're going to see that free gift in a minute. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. And if you want to talk about that later, young lady, you can. Okay? Ephesians chapter 2. Looking at verse 8. It says, For by grace are you saved through what? Faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a what? Gift of God. So you didn't even save yourself. So that gift that God gave you right there is called a present. He has decided because of you, accepting his son, he's going to give you an offering. Ain't that something that God gives you an offering? <laughs> ain't, ain't, ain't you, you know, you hear a bunch of people in the church that say, give me an offering. But here's God saying, I'm giving you an offering. Amen. And what is that offering? Salvation. Amen. So he says, I'm going to give you salvation, a free present. And if you accept this free present, I'm going to give you a gratuity. You can't get the gratuity. Hello, let me just say the gratuity is. The what? The Holy Spirit. You can't get the tip unless you accept the present. Are y'all with me? Amen. So, if you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, God says, automatically give you a tip. And what's the tip? The Holy Ghost begins to live in you. And what's that? What begins to happen? Now, you stop being just a vessel and become the church of God. Amen. Now, in this house, they call it what? Regeneration. Y'all heard pastors talk about regeneration all the time. You have been drawn before the foundations of the world. God already knew who would come to him. Amen. Amen. So God already knew he was going to be his. But look at these free, wonderful gifts. And there's a lot of gifts that God gives you. How many of you, when you're on Christmas morning, you couldn't wake up? I know my mother would have let me run down those steps until midnight or first thing in the morning. I'd be trying to sneak down the steps to get to that present. And when I got to that present, what did I do with it? How come God is offering you the gift of, gift of eternal life and you're leaving it wrapped up? You won't even open the box. He said, I got all these wonderful gifts for you, but you won't even open the box. Because once you receive the gift of salvation or the free present of offering from God, and he gives you that tip, then he begins to give you something called distribution of endowment of the Holy Ghost. What does that big word mean, Warren? It means now you are going to receive a gift that you're talented to do. Amen. Now all of a sudden, God said, now that you receive my present, now that you got the gratuity, I'm going to bless you <coughs> with your talent, whether it's art, singing, writing, Amen. preaching, carpentry, plumbing, whatever that is, it stops being a talent and begins to be used of God. Oh, man, I'm jumping ahead of myself, but I'm going to show you that whatever you do today had nothing to do with you. Amen. It was already in you, but you've been calling it your talent. But God knew before the foundation of the world, before you were born, he put that in you. To either speak well, write well, talk well, draw well, whatever it is. He gave it to you. I wish I could sing, but he didn't give me that one. Amen. 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 But I have an ability to fix things. I don't fix them like a scientist, but for some reason I have a to figure it out. What is your gift? So, it's called distribution of endowment. And what happens is, when a person has a talent, they use it for themselves. <laughs> That's why they're prideful and call movie stars. You know, they're trying to get rich. Amen. But when you get a gift of endowment from God, it stops being a talent and becomes his gift so that you can use it to help others. There's no way in the world God is going to fill you with a gift and you don't use it to help others. Then it's not God. Amen. If you're not using what God has given you to use to help someone else, it's not God. Ain't no way in the world I can study all this Bible, get all this so-called wisdom and knowledge in the Word of God and don't give it up. Ain't no way in the world that should be. 
That's why I tell people all the time. I have learned to move from receiving from God to giving to God. See, I don't sow money to get from God. Because first of all, I told somebody the other day, I don't understand even why money is called a seed. Hey, if you want to call it a seed, that's on you. When, when the guy in the Bible who buried it, Jesus got angry. The seeds are to be buried. Then the shell breaks and it dies and causes a root and have to break through the ground. But when I found out, when I gave to somebody, God said, I'm going to immediately reward you. I didn't have to wait, did I? I immediately got that reward. You know what that reward was? The joy to, of the person that I gave to gave me joy. That's an immediate effect. So if I gave money, I know God already gave me the joy because it was immediate. I didn't have to bury it and wait on it on the floor and all that kind of stuff. It came to me. It's all because I'm happy to give. That's why he did money. Amen. Amen. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Go to Hebrews chapter 2. We're going to look at the distribution of uh, the Holy Ghost turned down. He endows you. Endowment means to provide with something permanent. So that means your gift is permanent for the day you die, right? A distribution of endowments. Whenever you talk about the gift of the body of Christ, it is an endowment. Every time you talk about your talent, you're talking about the endowment that Christ has filled you with. Amen? Amen. Amen. Some of us has taken it. You know, if you look at my Bible, I can see drug dealers on the streets, you know, because these young guys, they're, they're mathematicians, they're entrepreneurs, they're businessmen. You know, you look at them, half of them can't read or count, but they know how to count their money. No. They know exactly if you gave them a fraud piece of dollar bill. Uh -huh. Oh, man, I got caught many a day, folding a half a dollar bill, making it a ten, and got busted Amen. by them. They know how to count. There's some gifted people out there, but they're using it for sin. Amen? Amen? All right, I said Hebrews chapter 2. Are y'all understanding how the, the free gift of God comes now? So once you accept him as Jesus Christ, he gives you that free present and the offering. Then he says, because you accept my son, I'm going to give you a gratuity, the Holy Ghost. And because now you accept the Holy Ghost, I'm going to give you a gift of endowment. Now I'm going to move whatever you're talented to do to make it work for me. Amen? And my kingdom. That's born again. Amen. I hope I made that understand. All right, look at uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. It says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing what? Bearing the witness, both by what? Signs and wonders. We talked about that last week. And with divers miracles and gifts, endowments, or distributions of the Holy Ghost according to his what? All will. Amen. That's the gift of endowment or distribution. Let's go over to Romans chapter 12. We got another verse concerning gifts of endowment. So how many of y'all carpenters in here? How many of y'all can work with their hands in here? How many of y'all know how to sing? See? Did you know that was God blessing you, brother? How much money have you made from that gift? Come on. A lot. A lot. So you took God's gift and misused it. Oh, I know I did. I'm not beating you up. I'm just telling you. Let's use it for the kingdom. Are you ready to use your gifts for the kingdom? Or you just want to stay talented? A lot of talented people went to hell. Amen. Amen. I'll get ready to say something about one of these famous stars that went to jail for, for kitty porn. And now he's dead. But I'm going to leave him alone. Y'all know who I'm talking about. He was once black and didn't turn white. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, Romans 12. Look at that verses 5 and 6. All right, we'll leave that alone. Look at verses 5 and 6. It says, So we being many are one body in Christ, and every member are one of another. Right? Having the gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Amen. According to the proportion of faith. See, when he says the body, look at your own body. The head of it is Jesus Christ. Right? But there are arms on that body. There are legs on that body. And even the most significant parts of the hand and toe is the pinky toe and the pinky finger. But guess what? You cut them off, some balance gets off. So everybody in the body is important. So no matter what gift you have, if, I, if, I, if you're not using your gift, you deplete me from using mine. Amen. Are you hearing? You are not a 
insignificant in the body. If you are part of the body of Christ. You know, we put the preacher up here like that. But if the preacher didn't have you to preach to, what would that part of the body need? Nothing. He needs a body to preach to. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So, we're going to get ready to look at that in a minute, too. We're going to get ready to look at that. Now, first, you got the present, as I said, of salvation. Then you got the tip of the Holy Ghost. And now you got the endowment of ability. It's your personal abilities. Whatever God calls you to do, he endows you with it. In other words, God says, I want you to work for me. Are you ready to work for me? God is telling you, with this gift I'm giving you, I want you to work for me. And if you say yes, I'll give you the tools you need to get the job done. Don't depend on you to get the tools. God will give you the tools to get the job done. All God wants to know from you is, will you be responsible to use the tools I give you? Are you going to be responsible to use the tools I give you? Go to Acts chapter 4. And let me tell you something right now. You don't have to be no genius. Stop that stuff. You ain't got to read excellent. I don't read that excellent. You ain't got to be the greatest studier in the world. All you got to do is have a desire to serve the Lord. Just that simple. Watch this. God, I mean, Jesus' disciples, quite no geniuses. This is one of the verses that gets me and do that I can be used of God. Let's see if it blesses you. Acts 4 and uh, 13. Acts 4 and 13. And it says, now, when they saw the boldness, that means your confidence. Are you confident in what you can When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were what? Unlearned, unlearned and ignorant. Unlearned and ignorant. Men, they marked. Why? And took knowledge of them that they had been with who? Jesus. Jesus. Do you want people to marvel at your gift? Amen. They know you ain't been to school. Amen. They know you ain't sat on professor so-and-so and, -so and pope so-and-so. But when your mouth opens, they marvel. You know why? Because they knew you didn't get it from no other person but Jesus. Amen. I love it when people marvel at me. Amen. Amen. So don't say I can't do this or I need to wait to do that. The biggest mistake people make in the body of Christ is saying, I got to wait until I get my life right before I come to Jesus. You just told God I can't use you. You just told God I'm a God unto myself. Because the only one who can deliver you from anything is him. You can't deliver yourself. Amen. So when you hear people talk like that, they just tell you right off the back, I don't want Jesus. I gotta wait, man. I know Jesus, I love Jesus, but I can't come and be using him until I stop sinning, until I stop getting high, until I stop fornicating. You know, I got this problem. No! Come to him while you're like that. Amen. And watch him work it out of you. You wait. You tell him God, I don't need you. Because he's the one that cleanses you anyway. Amen. Amen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Look at some more gifts up and down. First Corinthians chapter one. Are y'all getting anything out of so far? Amen. Are y'all understanding the process of salvation a little bit? I hope I'm enlightening what the you know the Presbyterians may say is uh, regeneration. It's still the same thing. But God has to God will be in you. For you to be regenerated. Amen? Amen. Oh, amen. So go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, look at verses 6 and 7. 6 and 7 says, Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come behind in no gift. Once it's confirmed in you, your gift of endowment, you won't come behind. Waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jump over to uh, go up to verse 4 and let's look it all the way down. Let's just go up to verse 4 and read it all the way down. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything you are enriched by him, in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the what? Yeah. End. That gift is going to stay with you until the end. Right? That you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, what does he say? Why? Because you're saved now. Amen? Amen? This means you should be working your gift until the coming of the Lord. 
You should be working your gift until the coming of the Lord. Even if nobody's using it, prepare yourself. Right. Start practicing. Start making.